is this thing? Okay, well, it looks like a gardening tool. Mm -hmm. Like, to kind of like rip out plants, maybe? To, um, to, to, a can opener. Uh, it looks like a shovel. Okay. Like some medieval shovel or something. So we're taking pears off of trees or apples off of trees. He let you have my house. Yes. My shit. He, we, I want it. You're trespassing on my property. You didn't win shit in my yard. Wait, wait, wait. I, all of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Get everybody out of my yard. Welcome back, it's me, Matt. Well, look at this thing, this contraption, this wizardry of aviation, this dual rotor new aviation aircraft for the United States Army. Yes, I'm sure many of you have already seen thousands of videos talking about this helicopter. Many of you have been asking me to talk about it as well. Is it a helicopter? Is it a bird? Is it is a plane? Is it a man? Who knows? In all honesty, this thing is fascinating to me. It's very, very peculiar. I know a lot of you are comparing it to the Osprey. There's lots to digest and to dissect about this aircraft, some of which, of course, has been multitude of times been talked on in other channels. But what do I think of the aircraft? A lot of you have been asking me my personal opinion. Well, it's really hard to say, folks. When we talk about something so brand new like this and so sophisticated, it's almost impossible to put opinion to anything something like this because, first of all, I'm not a subject matter expert. I know very little about helicopters. Um, I do know quite a bit about aviation engines, though, which is something that I can definitely speak to. But the Army, the United States Army, has uh, really done quite a bit of work in its homework in selecting the Bell aircraft, known as the V-280 Valor, and uh, I actually really like the name of the aircraft just to start with, the Valor, I think that's a really cool name. Uh, look at the thing though, the way in which it's agile to the point of precision movement is actually really fascinating. Now of course helicopters inherently should be that way, but uh, this thing when you're seeing it kind of dance around with a tilt rotor like this, it's certainly not the Osprey, which I know a lot of you are saying, but Matt, the Osprey is dangerous and so many people have died in it, yes, and the Osprey is quite terrifying. Uh, but there's a lot of bias there, um, and I was actually watching a really fascinating video from another YouTuber, I apologize, I forgot his name, but he actually initially came into the video saying, you know, I do have some bias, I've actually been on board and operated as a US Marine in the helicopter, which to me speaks words to that review, and I'll actually try and find that video and link it in the description box below, really, really good video. But after a long, long development and trial period for this helicopter against other aircraft out there today, it's finally going to be taking over the Black Hawk, which, as you saw at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of uh, discussion about that, and a lot of, I would say, somewhat, uh, maybe hard feelings? Hard to say. Black Hawk has been around for a long time. It's one of the primary use helicopters of the United States uh, Army, and it's served its time. It's done its time. It's been involved in some incredibly uh, intense battles and uh, combat scenarios around the world, and, of course, one of the more prominent ones, which you're all very well aware of, is Black Hawk Down. And when I look at an aircraft like this, thinking, could this operate just as, you know, as well as the aircraft that operated in uh, in Somalia and Mogadishu, would this be the same case? And I, I struggle to see the comparison. It's really difficult to make that comparison. But I actually think an aircraft of this kind wouldn't make a huge amount of sense. It's a lot more open of a target. And I think that's one of the things I primarily notice about this helicopter slash aircraft is that it is very prominent in its silhouette and size. If you wanted to put an RPG in this thing, it would be a lot easier to do than it would be the profile of a Black Hawk. And many of you may disagree with that, but it's pretty true. I mean, folks, if you wanted to aim at something like this, there's a lot more surface area to engage. So when you talk about being able to operate this aircraft compared to a Black Hawk, there's a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences that you can't really quite compare because they're not the same thing. You're comparing apples to oranges. You can't put a Black Hawk against this and say, oh, well, this thing's better or worse than the Black Hawk because they're not the same application. They're not being asked to do the same thing. For instance, this aircraft is designed to go a lot faster with more payload, is highly digitalized, and most importantly, its maintenance is so much better, cheaper, and more efficient than that of an older program such as the Black Hawk. Now, the UH-60, of course, has done a lot of good upgrades that will convert them and keep them in service. There's about 2,100 Black Hawks in the US Army inventory. That is a lot. However, the cost to maintain older platforms adds up very quickly. When you have new programs that are more efficient, we talk about things like 3D printing, we talk about digitalization of uh, maintenance records using, you know, even virtual reality. I mean, the industry I work in, we're looking at trying to 
uh, create uh, servicing and maintenance that's more able to be sort of virtual augmented reality style setup of maintenance. These things add up and it's not always the sexy stuff that we talk about. You know, the weapons it can carry, the weight it can hold, the speed it can go. It's about how easy it, the system is to work in its modular sense, whether removing or replacing com key components such as the engines or whatever else. These things all add up and uh, the aircraft has definitely been designed in a way that they want to try and create efficiency for the military for a long time to come. And that's really interesting to see. I know as many of you probably are screaming at your monitors right now saying, Matt, that's not cool and interesting. I'm turning off and unsubscribing. So be it. But it's the reality, okay? Very similar programs are looking at the same thing, such as the F-35, trying to create a maintenance system and a program that keeps the aircraft in the air for longer. That's so important, especially with something that's going to replace something that is so inherently important for the US military, which is a transport or, you know, basically a, a not so much as attack helicopter, but a supportive role helicopter. Over 2,100 aircraft that are currently in service will be potentially being replaced by this helicopter. So it's pretty important that it is able to stay in the air for as long as possible because it's got big boots to fill or big rotor blades to fill, I guess. But let's dissect a little bit more about what's so special about the V280 Valor. Well, it's really built for a top speed of around 300 knots, which is around 345 miles per hour or 556 kilometers an hour, and should have a maximum range around 2,440 nautical miles or 4,419 kilometers before refueling to meet the US Army's requirements for a full range helicopter they need something that can go a long distance allowing it to get to a multitude of operational areas without the need for refueling its maximum takeoff weight is anticipated notice the anticipated because of course they're still subject to a lot of development that can come in the future or upgrades to be around 30,000 pounds which is 14,000 kilograms that is incredible this thing could carry an m777 no problem with its crew and take it to the front line which being an artillery gunner of course i'd want to see one of these things sling in some m777s of the future and unlike the similar Boeing V-22 Osprey tilter rotor, the engines on the V-280 are kept in position while the rotors and the drive shafts tilt. That's pretty important, folks. I work in the aviation industry, know quite a bit about aircraft engines, and when you start moving engines around, things start to get a little funky. Gearboxes as well, but it's interesting to see that the shafts are tilting and not the engines itself. When you change the angle of engines, fuel mixtures, combustion liners, things like that, Things start to do strange things. Physics starts to do weird things, but they've changed a little bit. We're talking about the shafts driving the rotors that are changing now, so universal joints. I'm very interested to see how those universal joints or those shafts work, especially at such high speeds and high torque values transitioning, especially from you know direct hovering flight to direct flight forward. Uh, that is pretty cool um, and also very, very, very peculiar in the way that it can do that without having a huge amount of strain on that shaft and it not failing. I'd be very curious to see how that works. It does have retractable landing gear and triple redundant fly-by-wire control systems with the V-tail design that allows it to basically somewhat super cruise when those propellers are facing forwards. Now, it's been pretty carefully designed and over the last three years, there's been so much development. I haven't been paying a huge amount of attention in it, in all honesty, but for a long-range assault role, I think the US Army has picked the right choice. I've looked at the Defiant and other aircraft that they were looking at trying to replace the Black Hawk with, but I think the US Army's made a really, really good next generation assault aircraft. Now, how did this all come to be? What was the US Army's procurement process? Well, the US Army's future vertical lift program was one of the service's top modernization priorities. There's a multitude of different priorities, and this was one of them. Now, the selection of the V-280 for the FLRAA is also likely to have a knock-on effect regarding European rotorcraft procurement initiatives such as NATO's Next Generation Rotorcraft Capability or NGRC effort. This was initiated in November 2020 with the concept stage launched on June 16, 2022 at the NATO Defence Ministerial Meeting in Brussels. The EU, meanwhile, is funding the European Next Generation Rotorcraft Technologies, or ENGRT, study for which Airbus Helicopters and Leonardo Helicopters is announcing a teaming on. Now, Leonardo in particular will be encouraged by the fact that the US Army has selected the Bell Tilter Rotor as its Black Hawk replacement, given that the companies constitute Augusta, business co-developed with Bell, the AW609 Tilter Rotor, which first flew on March 6, 2003. And although the AW609 is currently marketed by Leonardo as a civilian aircraft, the Italian Army has previously shown some interest in Tilter Rotors for rapid troop transports and medical evacuation missions.
Now, personally, in terms of looks, I have to say Sikorsky Boeing's Defiant X really was a more sexy looking aircraft. It looked just incredible. Um, they both look incredibly good in their own way, but I have to say, though, if I was to say, you know, which helicopter would you be most you know, proud to be flying in. I have to say Sikorsky's Defiant X looks the most incredible, but on paper and in terms of technicalities, it's safe to say the Bell V280 is absolutely kicking butt compared to Sikorsky. It's got some seriously impressive capabilities, long range capability, the speed, its maneuverability, its precision movement in the landing zone is really what's setting this thing apart. And when you look at the numbers, the Valor can reportedly haul up to 23% more troops and 25% more cargo at longer range with less maintenance costs. It's a no-brainer. Now, this certainly is not going to be a cheap endeavor. No, no, no. And when you create something new, of course, you're inherently going to expect a pretty big price tag. But that's going to happen when you look for the best technology with the most capability. And and with Bell's win, it sets the table for an initial acquisition of up to 1.3 billion US dollars. According to the Army's Programming Executive Officer for Aviation, Major General Rob Barry, a follow-on low-rate production phase could be worth roughly 7 billion, and fully realized production run, including potential foreign military sales, may become somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 billion dollars, which is absolutely incredible and of course the army says that valor will potentially replace approximately 2000 of the uh 60 black hawks and uh potentially also 1200 boeing ah 64 apache attack helicopters which is also a pretty big deal because now we're getting into actually attack helicopters that have the ability to knock out tanks and support ground troops or these other transport helicopters in flight or on operations to me knowing that this could be the future of all attack helicopters for the US Army is, is pretty exciting. And there's a big, big task ahead for Bell and manufacturing of this helicopter. I'm actually really stoked for them. I'm just really stoked in general to see uh, things actually progressing forward for the US military and producing something that's going to be really, really cool in the future. You know, we see all these video games with fascinating new high-tech helicopters but this is this is the reality this is what you're actually going to see in the future uh you know on operations or potentially you could be serving with them maybe you're watching this video and saying you know in the next 10 years when i grow up or whatever i'm going to join the u.s army well you could be inside of one of these things and uh, actually operating with it which is you know for most of you probably pretty exciting some of you may be terrifying uh personally if i was being flying in a helicopter like this uh, i'd be pretty excited i mean it's not like the osprey i think a lot of people have put a lot of bias and negativity to it uh, I also feel like the V-22 Osprey gets a lot of negativity. I understand for obvious reasons, but uh, the aviation world is is a complex one. There's a lot of moving parts, literally, and uh, things can go wrong. That's not justifying that when things go wrong, it's right. But uh, the technology and the advancements in technology with this kind of application looks like they may be able to address some of the things that were going wrong from the V-22 into the new V-280. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, learned something. Uh, you finally got my somewhat opinion of this. I think it's exciting. I think this is going to be a really good aircraft overall for the US military and for those who are going to be using it. Uh, hats off to you. You're going to have a good time, I think, playing around and flying this thing or operating in it. And uh, yeah, it has its flaws, I think. One of those big things is its profile, probably its cost. I mean, it is a lot of money, but as I said, paying for quality. But at least you now know my thoughts on the Valor. Thanks so much for joining me today and uh, for stopping by on the video. Please leave me a like. And if you enjoyed today's video, click the little bell by the subscribe button. She can be notified of any content coming up in the future. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And finally, please go check out my sponsorship in the description box below. Attire for effect. They are an artillery themed clothing brand. Really cool stuff. Flags, patches, uh, clothing, t-shirts, hoodies, you name it. It's there. Go check out the link and their website and their store. They got some really cool stuff. Thanks again. Have a wonderful time. Bye bye.